What's up everyone, it's your boy NornRad89 here bringing you another rad movie review today. We're going to be talking about Hellraiser 2 Hellbound, the sequel to the 1987 horror classic. If you haven't gone seen it, go out and watch it because we're going to be talking some spoilers today and everything. Spoiler warning alert. So just come back and watch this video after you go see this movie. Let's get down to it. Roll it. So, Hellraiser 2, Hellbound, the sequel to Hellraiser, the first one, the classic horror film and everything done by Clive Barker. This one is directed by Tony Randall and written by Peter Atkins. So we got some different people coming in to do it, but it's based off of a book that Clive Barker did. So before we start talking about it, let's define a good sequel. A good sequel is a film that doesn't ignore the first one. It has like an homage where it, like it pays attention to the first one, but is able to add to the to the world that was built in the first film usually and you want usually a very stable continuity and you want the value production value and all those kind of things to be equal as well so let's get down to talking about this sequel so right off the bat we have some stable continuity because we bring back some awesome characters from the first film we got kirsty and julia return into this film and everything and we get a very good carry off from the other one like if you watch the first one and then you watch the second hellraiser film they flow very well together it's a really good first one and a sequel that go together perfectly and everything we get to follow kirsty our main character from the first one who was admitted to a psychiatric hospital after everything that happened from the first one because I mean, not too many people are going to believe you after you like explain the stuff about being attacked by Cenobites from a box that got opened up and your your uncle took your dad's skin and everything like a lot of people aren't going to believe you for that stuff. So she gets locked up in a psychiatric hospital and everything. Now we get to Dr. Shannard's character, who is a doctor who actually is interested in her story and he's her psychiatrist and everything, but he's interested in her story because he's actually been searching out the box and everything. So he actually wants to open up the box and desires to see what's inside of it and everything. So we got someone else bringing another character in who's too greedy and too curious for his own good and everything. Also, we get Julia's return who she returns from the hell dimension because she died in the first one and was killed and everything. So in this one, she actually returns from the hell dimension, like a skinless woman. We got like a really good actress to play her too. Like imagine just like just muscles and no skin and everything. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. Like the graphics in this are good. Like I said, the production value is almost just as equal to the first one. Like in a lot of people's area, like, production value you would think they'd go down or something or they like lean more on cgi and stuff but this one is still practical and still brings you the stuff you like from the first one so we get julia's return which is a great antagonist and we have kirsty the great protagonist so right off the bat we're getting some stable continuity right there and everything now we actually also get like i said another antagonist in this film dr shannard who ends up becoming so obsessed with the box and wants to get inside of it and he's kind of used by julia at first she kind of uses him to get what she wants and everything but he still ends up getting into the box and all that stuff which is another amazing thing about this film we actually get more cenobite action we get the appearance of like inside the box and we get to see leviathan who is like the demon god of their dimension and everything so we get some awesome great scenery and like cinematography and just the shots in this one they're creative and like mystical it has that good late 80s early 90s feel you know what i mean kind of like never ending story like you know it kind of has that look that feel to it like when they're inside of it so i really like that the design of it is really legit and everything there's some horrific haunting rooms they run into when they're inside the box and everything and all this kind of stuff so it's really good stuff i liked it a lot also we have some stable character development again in this film so we get our good character arcs continuing from the first one you know we like we get that stableness that they are still the same characters that we love but they have a new arc and something else new to battle so it's like a great part and great character growth in this film as well so we love that so in all honesty when you're looking at this one as a sequel to the first film it does everything you really want. It takes the amazing effects, 
carries it on. It takes the amazing characters and gives us new character arcs that we want to follow, introduces new interesting characters and everything to build upon the story, and gives us a new look at some of the stuff, like even inside the puzzle box and everything, and the look at Leviathan and all these kind of things. So it's really cool. It's a great sequel. If you talk to a lot of horror communities out there, like they're probably split. Like you could toss them up. Like a lot of people will say Hellraiser's better or Hellraiser 2. That's how close these two are. Like they are two really good first films. Like I said, if you watch the first one, you should definitely watch the second one right after, like either that day or the day right after, because they, they flow very smoothly together they only came out a year apart and even though we got a different director and a different writer they paid really great respect to the book and everything that clive barker wrote and they paid a good homage to it and honored it and everything so i was happy with hellraiser 2 i'm a big fan of both of them big fan of both of them it's like really depends if you catch me on saturday i might tell you hellraiser one's better if you catch me on sunday i might tell you the second one's better so that that's how close these two films are it's kind of like that Terminator 1, Terminator 2 thing, or Aliens, Alien, like it's kind of like that for a lot of people. So hopefully you guys like the review and everything and stuff. Like I said, thanks for hanging out with me. Stick around and everything. I'll be dropping reviews for some of the other Hellraiser films and all that kind of stuff and everything. So leave your likes, hit that subscribe button, get that notification bell on there so you can get up to date videos whenever I post them and stuff. And in my book overall, like I said, Hellraiser 2 is pretty close with the first one. Hellraiser 2, in my book, is going to get another 10 out of 10 for me. This is going to be a hard 10. And like I said, depending on what day you catch me, I might say one's better than the other. It just depends and everything. Maybe nostalgia reasons for the first one, but the second one definitely adds more Cenobite action. We get more Pinhead. We get creations of new Cenobites. We, like I said, we get great character arcs for characters that we like from the first one. And we get additions of some new characters and they carry on the same music, the same vibe. So it's everything you really want in a sequel, to be honest. So like I said, 10 out of 10 for me. Definitely, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and stuff. Hit that like button and subscribe and everything. Peace out.